Hello and welcome back to a brand new video of Fox Flix on the Film Theatrist. Today we're looking at a theory on what a con is, aka the living meat. Let's check in and see what Matt Pat was able to scoop up for this solving. On planet Earth, life has thrived for millions of years. Creatures big and small have found ways to adapt and evolve to flourish in all types of environments. True. But recently, things have changed. New life forms have started to appear. Strange fleshless creatures made of pure meat. They have taken- Yeah, literally pure meat. If you haven't checked out that little horror series yet, you may want to check it out. And, like Matt Pat, you're gonna have a laugh when you hear about the meat snake. I know what you're thinking. It's not that. But check it out. In many forms, some delicious, some dangerous. But one thing is clear about this new addition to the natural order. We humans are about to be put into the grinder. Oh shit. Hello internet, welcome to Film Theory, the show that just found itself a new pet. Oh, oh poor baby. <laughs> yeah. You and I have very different reactions. See, as you can tell up here, these little things are called trimmings. They are the, I guess you could technically say second life forms to be made out of the uh, Vodokonis. Yes, but they are not, uh, well, you know what, I have no way of explaining it. Just go check out our GT Live reaction or check out the channel yourself if you want. And they'll tell you all about it. And even that tell you how to cook it. <laughs> I feel like this is a squishmallow waiting to happen. No. Oh, just look at this guy, he's adorable. I just want to give his little fleshy head a pat and... Wait, what's that little guy? What? You want everyone to subscribe? Oh, come on now, guys. You heard him? Can you say no to this little face? By the way, do you guys like protein? <laughs> a nice... You heard that uh, little meat bug? Hit that subscribe button for me, will you? steak that would look great on a plate in a pie sewn into a dress well do i have a surprise for you friends it is meat weekend loyal theorists oh. that's right it's our very first four-way crossover for the theory channels and we all thought what is something that truly unites the hmm. worlds of gaming film food and style and then it hit us in the face like a wet sloppy slab of beef meat. and thus mystery meat weekend was born baby yep over on game theory you can see us cover the latest round of Merge Mansion lore, where Grandma Ursula's oh. filling her pies with some unconventional choices of meat. Just hope that Pedro Pascal makes it out alive. Meanwhile, over on hmm. Food Theory, we're looking into the very real science behind mammoth meatballs. Yep, you heard that one right. Scientists have cloned the- Let's be honest, if you guys had a chance, would you take a bite out of that? I mean, if I was just told it was just a big meatball, I'd say yeah, but if I was told it was a mammoth meatball, then I'd be a little skeptical, but I'd still be willing meat of extinct woolly mammoths. The first thing that we humans did, we decided to cook it up and put it in our mouths. Sounds pretty darn accurate. Speaking of putting things in our mouth holes, <laughs> over on Style Theory, we're covering whether or not you can eat Lady Gaga's infamous meat dress. Probably because not. if you are what you eat, then why not eat what you wear? Yeah, making a dress out of meat, that was pretty darn weird, but not nearly as weird as what we're about to cover here today on Film Theory. Okay, now here you go. Now you can kind of see the life cycle. You got uh, like the vines, the trimmings, the meat snake. And then you have the highly dangerous creatures. Well, not this one. The obelisk here at the last stage. It's not really dangerous. It's just kind of there. So, yeah, not really a threat. Well, yet. We have almost no information on what it or the state after it is. Uh, let's continue on, sorry, <laughs> shall, shall we? <laughs> you see, today we're talking about the strange, thick, meaty world of Vita Carnis. The next species on our list is the meat snake. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. When you're under the confident about your meat snake. It's just really cold outside, okay? <laughs> yes, we here at are indeed a bunch of mature adults. A ton of people were recommending that we check this series out over on our subreddit and in the comments on GT Live. So if you ever have yourself a suggestion for content like this that you want us to look at, those are two great places places to go make those recommendations. And I am really glad that you guys put this one on our radar. This is an analog horror series that you can go watch right now for free on YouTube.com. Created by artist and filmmaker Darian Quilloy. But Ooh. unlike pretty much all other analog horror series, Vita Carnis isn't I gotta be honest, that was actually some pretty cool artwork. Like, right here? That? That is damn good. I don't know why. I like it. 
opening into uncanny go. liminal strangeness like the back rooms, or weird twisted doppelgangers like Mandela Catalog, or even nostalgic mascot horror like uh, pretty much everything else. Instead, yeah. the creep factor here is coming from horrifying creature design. Vita Carnis is the story of weird meat-based creatures that have started appearing in nature. And let me just say this one up front, this is one of the most original analog horror series that I've seen in a long time. The oh, yeah, monsters very original. are made of flesh and eat bones, but they also grow like plants. It's a very cool idea. In the series, we learn most of our information through documentary tapes filled with strange glitches. But there's also archived home videos and newspaper clippings mm -hmm. thrown in for good measure. And where there's creepy hidden details, you know that there's plenty of lore, lore to decode. <laughs> in short, I devoured my time with Vita Carnis. And let me tell you, the deeper and deeper we get into this documentary, Ching. the more pieces of the puzzle that start falling into place. Where is this mystery meat coming from? Why is the government trying to cover it all up? And is there anything that we can do to stop what seems to be our inevitable trip to the meat grinder? Season your food and ready your meat snakes, friends. Today we've got ourselves a lot to chew on. So to start Time things to off, in. what exactly is going on? As I mentioned at the top of the theory, the bulk of Vita Carnes' story is told through a documentary put together by the National Living Meat Research to educate the public, and by extension us, about the creatures yep. in this new genus of skinless animals made out of muscle, organs, and bones. They're called Vita Carnis, Latin for living, living meat. meat. Aren't we all just alive meat? Right? I feel like this is just <laughs> stating a statement of facts. Like, oh yeah, you're living meat. And not only do they look like raw meat, they also love to consume raw meat. Obviously yep. not a concern for all us fleshy meat sacks out there. As the yeah. story goes, these creatures basically appeared out of nowhere starting in 1931, and their population quickly skyrocketed over the subsequent decades. The documentary is quick to point out that the origins of these creatures are solely to Earth, miraculously out of nowhere. Seemingly ruling out that they're Ooh. aliens or demons or any other classic analog horror fare. In fact, their taxonomy is really well laid oh, out across crawl. these videos. The Vita Carnis genus is split. Right, it goes crawl, then trimming, then meat warm, um, all the way up until obelisk. Or is that really the last one? <laughs> nah. To several species, some cute, some useful, and some literal nightmare fuel that'll oh, get yeah. you second guessing your next hike out into nature. In fact, the more we hear about each of these types of critters, the more the dark truth of this world starts coming into focus. The first few creatures are weird, but more or less benign. The most abundant of these is known as the crawl, which are these sort of vines that resemble intestines growing across the entire world. This stuff is edible and apparently makes for a good meat substitute to the point that it's been domesticated and used in several popular in-universe meals. In fact, one of the videos on the channel is a tutorial on how to create a cheesy pasta dish using the crawl. Today's mm -hmm. dish will be a cheesy crawl penne. Watch out, boys. Looks like we have ourselves another new entrant in the Babish culinary universe. The second type of creature is known as trimmings. These things grow from the crawl, fall off, and then start skittering around on their own. They're basically <laughs> sad little... It just pretty much goes... Boom, plop. And crawls off. <laughs> ...flesh turtles that run, hide, and scream. Next... <laughs> Oops, Switching. hold on, hold on, we got an ad, and we're back to the meat snake. ...is my personal favorite of the bunch, the meat snake. Look at this one-eyed monster. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what can I say? I just love myself some meat snake. According to the lore, these things Chills, are basically just... dead body garbage disposals, crawling around and eating dead carcasses, animal or otherwise. And in what might be one of the coolest bits Ooh. of creature design that I've seen from an analog horror series in a while, they take the skulls of the creatures they consume and then use them as their own. Normally, these things are only supposed to grow up to 5 meters or 16 feet, which is already pretty darn long, but astute yeah. viewers can actually find a hidden newspaper clipping that confirms that they can grow to be much larger. After yeah. World War II, a quote, extremely engorged meat snake of- If you also look at its mouth here, you can see that it's got, uh, like, uh, deal skulls for teeth. Impeccable size, their words not mine, was discovered in a tunnel underneath Germany, which consumed so many dead bodies from the war that it grew to eight times the average length. The Damn. skin of this behemoth was also more powerful. It was darker and harder than a normal meat snake. I don't know how much of this is actual lore and how much of this is just trolling. Anyway, the scientists eh, who found it had a lot of difficulty cutting through the meat snake. And with that, it's here that the creatures of Vita Carnis take a hard right turn away from weirdly cute with funny names into pure distilled nightmare fuel. Okay, Next up, we've got ourselves called? the Mimic, which are yeah, exactly what they sound like. Human the Mimic. As you can tell by the name, they mimic humans. Like creatures with creepy smiles, bulging eyes, extended limbs, and a diet composed of human flesh. Oh! Yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh jeez! Yeah. I did not expect that at all! These puppies are fast, too. Those Mimics are freaking creepy as hell. 
<laughs> the more humans they eat, the more human they look, and the darker their skin becomes. That last part sounds like a weird detail, but now that's the second time that we've heard it mentioned, so it feels like an important detail to keep in the back of our minds. It Mimics is. will pick out a target, use clothing to disguise themselves, or even go so far as to hide in the furniture in an attempt to capture their prey. Don't know how a tall, lanky flesh monster is going to be hiding in the family beanbag chair, but sure, we'll just go <laughs> for it. And yet, despite the massive threat that this thing poses to human I mean, how many bones does it have? If it has very little bones, it could probably just go like an octopus, like, a, uh, uh, I mean, God, an octopus with a coconut and just go, Bam! you know, if you've seen what I'm talking about, you know what I mean. It doesn't really seem that there's all that much being done about it. Sure, apparently the world governments have offered advice to their citizens, but it all really amounts to don't die, lol. Because of the obvious threat this poses on humanity, nations around the world have released instructions on how to be able to fend for yourself in a mimic encounter. Here are the instructions. The horror only continues with the next creature too, called the Harvester. These are large masses of flesh that plant themselves in the earth and then extend roots out in all directions. But unlike typical crawl, these roots have literal thorns in them that'll stab into any large animal that walks on them. The worst large part animal. of all this, the thorns are full of venom that disable the nervous system and prevent a victim's blood from clotting, which means that they're gonna Crap. kill him from blood loss so the body can then be consumed. And if all of that wasn't bad enough, there's apparently no way of surviving this. If you are stunned by a heart yeah. There will be no way of helping you, being that there is no cure, and fatality is 100% positive. We later see and hear what Shit. a death by harvester is like in the video Species Anomaly Report, and let me tell ya, it is not pleasant. Now, normally at this point in the script, I'd insert a little clip here to help illustrate my point, but let me tell ya, it's rough, even yeah. for me. Just take my word for it, it is scary stuff. As if we needed more reasons- So, if you wanna see what that is, you're gonna have to go watch that yourself, okay guys? Come on, trust me. No, wait, uh, trust me and don't watch it. No, trust me and do watch it to support the cradle. To not go and touch grass. And then we have what might be the creepiest of these freak shows, the host of influence. Creatures with semi-humanoid torsos and masses of vines that burrow into the ground. Spines extend from their backs, releasing clouds of orange spores that can infect other organisms. From there, the spores go directly into the brain and temporarily alter the minds of the victims, compelling them to sacrifice themselves to the host. Which, yep. yes, I too have seen The Last of Us, thank you very much. Someone call Pedro Pascal. Looks like we're gonna need his help again. <laughs> Meat weekend? More like Pedro Pascal weekend. Wonder Pedro! If I a way to work him into the meat dress episode. If I did, go down to the comments and say like, hey, I understood that reference. Just to show everyone that you are here, that you have officially completed the meat cycle. Anyway, in the <laughs> most recent video on the channel, Message, we see a newspaper clipping that says that the authorities are refusing to handle any harvesters. Why? Are they scared? Is there nothing they can do? No, I don't think so. Remember how I just talked about the hosts releasing clouds of orange powder? Well, later oh, on in the yeah. channel, there's that random cooking upload that I made a joke about earlier. The cheesy crust casserole. Well, in that video, we watch as they use a special seasoning called the Nutrier Co. Flavor Enhancer, a suspiciously orange powder. Not only that, but the company's logo is a black circle with a red triangle in the middle. This exact series of shapes flashes across the screen during a similar part of the documentary talking about the hosts. These hairs are barrels that release spores produced within host's body by being fired into the air. These spores are hazardous so keep clear of them at all costs. See yeah. it right there for that single frame? It's the exact same logo. Clearly these two things are connected. And just like with the spores, the flavor enhancer is apparently something that people at Nutrirco don't want to be inhaling for themselves. For a moment during our cooking tutorial, the faceless babish cook leans down oh, and we get the briefest glimpse of a gas mask covering his face. Something else that lets huh. you know that something's just off about this powder. Notice what else happens to the soothing guitar background music when the flavor enhancer gets added. Point. Finish preparing the dish with your flavor enhancer, but allow your dish to cool to it. The guitar it becomes crude, almost childish. As, as if now being played by someone that has no idea how to play a guitar. It's crazy. It's almost like the mind of the player has been altered in some way. And did you hear what she just said? But allow your dish to cool to a temperature below 60 degrees Celsius or else the enhancer will not work. The enhancer doesn't work if it's above 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Conveniently enough, because... that's the exact temperature at which most fungus dies, like we talked about in our Last of Us video. Boom. Go figure. And, as if you needed any more proof, a newspaper clipping from Message reveals that Nutrirco is facing charges from people getting sick after consuming their products. So things are already looking pretty darn bad for humanity. We've got meat vines everywhere, humanoid mimics in our furniture, meat snakes in our subways, poison in our power, 
powders and even more reasons to fear yeah, going out on hikes. Freaking great! Now, once again, we reach a significant change in tone, veering from analog horror spoofs to Lovecraftian SCP terror yeah, with the monoliths. These things appeared in 1972, standing in a perfect circle. Oh, monolith. I call them an obelisk. Eh, same thing in a redacted location surrounding something else that's been redacted. Based on a map that we see in the video, we can figure out that the location is on an island in Canada's Hudson Bay. And given that we see a map in another video named Message, saying that the Vita Carnis creatures all seem to be moving to this location, this seems to be the point of origin hmm. for everything. So what exactly are these monoliths? Well, there's seven entities that are roughly the size of a 37-story skyscraper. Whoa. Their legs are firmly rooted into the ground with dozens of long, ropey tentacles that move about. Creepiest of all though, these things just kind of stand around. They don't really react to anything. At one point, several military vehicles attempted to bomb the monoliths, but they just released an EMP pulse that disabled the attack. Even Ooh. the bombs that managed to hit didn't do that much because the monoliths just repaired themselves. However, did you notice the important detail here? They released an electromagnetic pulse to defend themselves. Yeah. So that right there, that's weird. Throughout the series, we see a lot of instances where the- Organic be beings should not be able to do that. Well, at least- semi-organic beings should not be able to do that. Carnus creatures seem to be taking control of or just outright destroying technology. During a glitch in the first documentary tape, we briefly see a newspaper clipping reporting that a radio tower has become overgrown by the crawl. Other newspaper clippings report trimming infestations under satellite dishes, and still other videos point out their interest in tech like television and radio. Trimmings also enjoy things that you enjoy as well, like watching the television or listening to the radio. It would appear as though the Carnus are learning from this technology. Since we're told hmm. that these creatures are closely connected to nature, it's likely that they're latching onto these unnatural human creations to either spy on us, destroy them, or ultimately use them against us. Now, at Both. first glance at the channel's Everything. uploads, that would seem like the end of the main series releases. Sure, there are some found footage videos in the mix, the cooking tutorial, a commercial for the seasoning powder, stuff like that, but outside of a re-uploaded compilation of all the previous videos, that seems to be the end of the documentary segments that form uh, the foundation uh, 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 of this world. Except that would be missing a huge final reveal hiding in plain sight. You see, what at first appears to be a rote re-upload of all the shorter documentary segments put together actually contains a final all-new monster, a creature that seems to be the one behind all of Vita Carnus' chaos. There this is. thing is known simply as the Singularity, and it's completely unlike everything we've talked about so far. It's a one meter in diameter dark sphere that's floating off the ground. That's it. It's a big old ball. It. We're told that several strange magnetic fields and- It's just a big black ball. Energy signatures are coming out of the singularity, but all the other information about it is kept classified. And the government wants to keep it that way. You see, according to a newspaper clipping that we see on screen during the latest video message, the people at National Living Meat Research were arrested for making this documentary because it Crap. included, quote, sensitive materials and defamation. But why? I mean, mimics and harvesters are killing people en masse. Hosts are spewing out mind-altering spores, and there's a corporation selling those spores as a spice to add to our food. Something feels off here. I mean, what? is the government hiding? Well, as the man uncovering the conspiracy in the video puts it, and I suspect that the singularity uh -oh. is at the center of it all. You see, special reports and newspaper clippings aren't the only thing that's hidden under the surface of the series. Disguised in the glitches of these videos, we can find pages from what appear to be a children's storybook, telling the story of a long-lost prince. Some parts of the pages are unreadable due to either glitches covering up the text, video artifacting that blurs the letters, or just being cut off, but we can largely Very get difficult. the gist of the story. So sit down and relax as I tell you a dark, twisted tale. Once upon a time, the magical royal Again. family of a distant kingdom wished to discover new lands. But as they were traveling by sea, their ship was struck by a giant storm. The prince fell overboard, eventually washing up injured on an island. He stumbles into a nearby cave, using what magic he can to put himself into a healing sleep. He slumbered for a long time, what seemed like forever, long enough for the land around him to change and evolve into something unrecognizable. Outside of the cave, a group of small critters began living on the island, struggling in times of hardship when there was too little food to go around. Eventually, the critters found the sleeping prince, awestruck by his magic. Some of them wondered if they'd be able to use the prince's magic to grow food and heal sickness, but the majority agreed that he was too dangerous and should be left alone. Despite this, some critters ignored the decision, sneaking what food they had to feed the prince, hastening his recovery. Thanks to them, the prince awoke, and now fully recovered, the prince befriended the critters. They formed a bond, oh. with the critters leading the prince to their home inside the forest. Hmm. They asked the prince if he would be able to help them, since the forest was unable to provide everything they needed to 
to survive. The prince agreed, using his magic to summon mystical lights, shapes, colors, and figures. The critters were Ooh. mesmerized by the prince's brilliance, and they built the prince a raft so he could return to his home kingdom. As he left, the prince vowed that with his power and the aid of the kingdom, he would someday return and heal the critters' home. Well, on the surface, this just seems to be like an odd little side story, a series of Easter eggs hidden in an analog horror video to add to the mystery, it is far from that. The way I see it, it's this- a lot more peaceful than I would have thought it to be. This is literally a metaphor for the entire story that Vita Karnas is trying to tell us. The prince, that's the singularity, or whatever is at the center of all this mess in Canada, controlling the rest of these meat creatures around the world. I suspect it's from some super powerful alien civilization. While traveling the cosmos with others of its kind, just like the prince on his ship, it's hit by some sort of tragedy in space, either a supernova or some sort of big bang. Something that is so powerful that our pathetic little human meat brains can't comprehend the scale. Either way, this alien creature is separated from all the others, and then it crash lands here on Earth millions of years ago in what eventually becomes modern-day Hudson Bay. Oh. It's there in the Hudson Bay that this alien entity forms an island that exists in the world of Vita Carnis, but not in our own world. Oh, yeah. Injured by the impact, whatever this creature is went into hibernation that has lasted itself hundreds of millions, maybe even billions of years, at least long enough that it seems that the origins of these creatures are solely to Earth miraculously out of nowhere. Tectonic yeah. activity and life on Earth reshaped the planet above it, just like the world outside the prince's cave changed while he was asleep. Eventually, intelligent life formed on the planet, us lowly humans. humans. We're the critters from that story, using up the resources of the world and struggling to survive, at least in the eyes of this more highly evolved being. Some humans eventually find the entity in the 1930s, and while most of the people in charge wanted to leave the creature be, others didn't. They saw it as a way to progress, to save themselves and the species from dwindling resources on Earth as humanity rings it dry. And why wouldn't they? Yeah. It's this incredible Lovecraftian being beyond anything we understand. And the organic material it creates helps the natural life cycle of Earth. But due to its unique life cycle, where old branches fall off and decay into nutrient-rich compost, all forms of life seemingly flourish instead. A cult forms in the highest rankings of humanity, in governments and corporations and militaries, all of them focused on somehow resuscitating this mysterious being. See the symbol on the flag that was put on the prince's raft oh, that they yeah. rebuilt? It's the same symbol that we see on the flavor enhancer. It's the same thing that gets called out in multiple other videos. It's it the is. symbol that represents whatever this cult worshipping the entity is. And how do they plan on bringing it back? Well, just like the prince in the story, they start feeding the entity. They start feeding it meat. Oh, no. Specifically humans. That's why nothing's being done about the mimic or harvester attacks. That's why the mind control spores are being distributed as condiments. That's why people are encouraged to eat the crawl and pretend that everything is okay and normal. That's why the elder mimics and the giant meat snake that they found in the tunnel are so much more powerful than the others. They've eaten more humans. They've grown stronger and darker as a result. Nope. Not quite as dark as the prince or the singularity, a giant floating black ball, but both the mimic uh -uh. documentary and the meat snake archival video make a specific- Like, I'm not against this. I am being freaked out i am just being like noping out of this because who wouldn't point to call out the color it grows a thick dark coating of a flexible skin a typical meat snake's color is bright reds and light browns this particular meat snake was a very deep maroon and i gotta say at this point it seems like the cult's been successful given the explosive growth of the vita carnis over the past century so is that it for humanity is the world doomed to fall to this lovecraftian alien being and the cult following it as it slowly awakens from its slumber thankfully not yet the latest video gives us hope since it appears that also i feel like this would either make a killer movie series or an amazing TV show if it had the right amount of uh, budget and all that. People behind the Vita Carnis documentary are connected to another organization that's starting a resistance. Known as the Containment and Research Consult Association Society, or CARCAS for short. It's an oh, great. Acronym. We love ourselves a good acronym. They've started their own recruitment drive and are attempting to blow this conspiracy wide open. And that's about it. Actually, that's about as far as the story's gotten at this point. Let me tell you, I for one cannot wait to see where this one goes next. Like I said oh, yeah, at the top agreed. of the episode, this has been one of the most original analog horror series I've watched in a while, and I hope that us covering it here gets more eyeballs over to Darian's hard work and spine-chilling arts. But while this may be all that we have right now for Vita Carnis, it is not all that we have for Mystery Meat Weekend, my friends. Remember to go check out all the other videos at our sister location. Yeah. Since we've been talking about eating Vita Carnis in this episode, might I recommend checking out what we have cooking over on Food Theory. You ever wonder what a mammoth meatball tastes like? Well, I'm about to tell yeah. you. It is literally like we're living in Jurassic Park. Let's just clone an extinct creature, but instead of creating an amusement park, let's just create an 
equivalent of a restaurant. Good job, humans. Uh -oh. That video is on screen right now, so click it and enjoy all the safe. All right, folks. Well, that's where we're going to end off today's video. I hope you all enjoyed this. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Link will be in the description, and I'll see all of you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.